If you try to buy an iPhone 14 Pro right now, the delivery time minimum is the end of December. That's a really long wait time, enough for anybody to question whether or not it's even worth buying one in the first place. I've owned my 14 Pro now for over two months and my opinions have evolved since my full review. One thing hasn't changed, which is that if you own an iPhone 12 Pro or older, I think purchasing the 14 Pro is an excellent idea. And if that's all you needed for that reassurance to go buy this, well, you're welcome and thank you so much for watching, but for anybody else that's sticking around because they want to know more about my long-term experience with this phone, we're going to dive into all the pros and cons and just some things I've discovered along the way with owning the 14 Pro for about two months now. One of the headline features of this device was the Dynamic Island. Initially, I was extremely excited because it was cool to get additional access to control your media like Spotify or get quick access to control your Apple TV. Honestly, it's awesome and it works really well, but something I realized through my experience with the phone was that the Dynamic Island feature on its own isn't so game changing as I initially thought it was going to be. I can't really do a whole lot with it yet outside of the first party stuff that Apple has built for it, like being able to control a timer or getting a visual for an airdrop or seeing your phone call. But outside of that, there's not much else to do with it. I just think it's one of those features that needs time to breathe and to really expand out to the rest of the iPhone lineup when the iPhone 15 and 16 comes out. That way developers actually have a reason to develop around the dynamic island and find more use cases outside of the stuff that Apple has already put for it. And also I have no problem saying that I couldn't go back to a non-dynamic island iPhone because like I'm so used to how it works right now, but I don't think this feature alone is worth upgrading for. Next, I wanna discuss the always-on display. I loved that Apple found a way to show off your lock screen wallpaper in a dimmed state without harming battery life. In my eyes, it also made my iPhone feel more like mine in a way. If everybody's iPhones were on a table and we all had the iPhone 14 Pro with always-on display turned on, I can very easily pick out whose phone is whose because all of our wallpapers are showing. In my opinion, it also made my iPhone sit in a state that allowed it to retain its beauty in a way, as weird as that sounds. Like if you have a nice wallpaper, it's always gonna be showed off. And if it's a wallpaper that gives you joy, well, it's always available for you to look at at a glance. But I'm in the minority from my experience. Most people are not happy with the always on display. So much criticism online and even in person, I brought my iPhone 14 Pro to a dinner, really dark in the restaurant and I put my phone on the table and people who are not into tech at all, like they're just super casual people, they found the always on display to be distracting. They felt it was too bright and they thought my phone was turned on and they kept asking me to turn it off. And I'm like, my phone is off. It's just the display is always on. And they were just, they didn't like it. Luckily, Apple has listened to feedback and actually in a future iOS update, they will allow you to disable the wallpaper and notifications if you are someone who finds this feature too much as it is right now. I just wanna take a moment now to thank today's video sponsor, Bezos. They sent over an affordable 10,000 milliamp hour MagSafe battery pack for the iPhone. It immediately snaps and charges on the back and features a kickstand for better viewing of content. You can also charge your iPhone with its 20 watt power delivery port with the cable if you need to charge it up in a pinch. And FYI, this charger does work with Android phones and earbuds like AirPods Pro. They also sent over their Power Combo Pro charging station, which features three outlets, two USB-C ports, and one USB port. It's perfect for charging multiple devices clutter-free and features a power button that you can tap on and off. The cord on the charging station is five feet long, so you do get a lot of flexibility with where you wanna plug this in. Click the links at the top of the description down below to check out these products today. Thank you so much, Bezos for sponsoring today's video. As for battery life, I've had a solid experience thus far with the iPhone. It delivers what I've always expected from Apple, which is all day battery life. I'm averaging about six to seven hours of screen on time, and that's with using just basic apps like Safari, social media apps, watching YouTube videos. Like I don't play any video games on my iPhone. And that's also with the always on display turned on. So in general, I'm actually very happy with the battery I'm getting out of this phone. The most significant upgrades to the iPhone 14 Pro in my opinion, has to do with the cameras. Over the past couple of months, the 48 megapixel sensor built into this phone has just blown my mind. Like, 
it's no joke. I've seen noticeable improvements in my photography across all images and scenes I take on the rear facing camera. The new flash on the phone is also a feature that I find to be incredibly underrated. The 14 Pro can now decipher the appropriate tone and intensity of the brightness of the flash to ensure the final result of the photo looks as good as possible. Like just imagine this scenario for a second. We've all went out at night and we've brought our phones and taken flash photos with it. And then when we look at the final result of those photos, it just looks like a giant flashlight is beaming on our face at times. And it's just, it's not pleasing. We don't blend in the environment properly. Like everything just looks off. With the 14 Pro, if you look at how this photo looked without flash, and then I turned on flash, you can see the iPhone chose a flash color that perfectly blended us into the warmer lighting in the background instead of traditionally opting for a bright white light. You would have probably mistaken this photo to not even be in flash and probably just in night mode or something but no that is flash on the 14 pro it just nails it every single time i am so impressed like i i never take photos without flash now at night with this phone. And an honorable mention actually, the 4K cinematic mode, my goodness. You can see from my demo shots here, these look as good as regular cameras at times. Overall, if you're somebody that is looking to improve your iPhone photography game, the 14 Pro is a notable upgrade. But honestly, if you're happy with the current state of the photos you're taking on your iPhone right now, and your phone doesn't feel slow, I don't feel features like the dynamic island and the new always on display display are enough of a good reason to upgrade. Yes, don't get me wrong, those features are very cool, but I don't think they're a thousand dollars cool. I think this generation of iPhone at the 14 Pro, I think that's really for people who are looking to get a better camera shot. And if that's not you, I would just skip out on this upgrade for now. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like down below. Check out my iPhone 14 Pro review. If you haven't seen it yet, it is very detailed. So you can see all the nuances of how I feel about this phone in that video right there. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch all of you guys in the next one. Peace.